ここからは任天堂スイッチのヘッドラインですご覧ください For the first time in 10 years The Nintendo Switch. It's been out for four years already. Four years. That's a long time. I remember it like it was just yesterday. People were talking online that Nintendo is finished, they're done for, no one's gonna buy this thing. Nintendo is doomed. But the Switch came out, it sold a lot of units, and it is still killing it in the game industry today. I bought my unit at launch, I've played it for many hours, I've played many games on it, and I will play many, many, many more. According to Nintendo, the Switch is in the halfway point of its life cycle. I thought this would be the perfect time to do some internet content, the most content of the internet with a top 10 list. That's right, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the 10 best games on the Nintendo Switch. And there's a lot of great Switch games out there, but I want to make a few rules here. For one, no ports. If it was on the Wii U, it will not be eligible for this list. Two, there are a few multi platform games on this list, and that's fine, especially if the Switch version came out a little bit later than the original version. The reason being is that a lot of companies didn't realize the Switch was going to be such a hot unit when it was first announced, as a lot of people got burned by the Wii U. So it took a bit of time for developers to realize, like, hey, we gotta get our games onto the system as soon as we can. So if it came out a little bit later, in my opinion, it's still eligible for this list. Three, no matter how much time or money you have, you're never gonna have enough of either to play every Switch game out there. I played a lot, but there's a few games that I just didn't get around to. Particularly in that like、uh, mid to late 2019 era, like games like、uh, Ouija's Mansion 3, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3, or Fire Emblem. I just didn't play them. I might like them, I just haven't played them. And lastly, there are a few notable games missing from this list, and that's a deliberate choice on my end, and I'll explain why at the end of the video. That seems like a lot of rules, but that way we have a nice, definitive top 10 list for the Switch here, and it gives you a really good idea of what kind of games really speak to me. So, with that all the way, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos, follow me on the social media, you know what it is, and let's get this list started off right with the game at our number 10 spot. Let's start this list off with a simple game 51 Clubhouse Games to be exact. Sometimes you aren't in the mood for anime tits or blowing stuff up with spaceships. Yes, that mood does exist. Sometimes you want to kick back with some simple, timeless games. But live in a tiny Tokyo apartment with no room for board games. Clubhouse Games scratches that itch perfectly. Lots of fun games here that are simple and intuitive to play. You're not going to find every game enjoyable, but at the very least, you can kick back and play a bit of Hanafuda or Na Uno before going back to anime tits and blowing stuff up. Alright, l that was a really simple way to start off this list. Now let's crank up that intensity with the games. That's right, I said games. At our number nine spot. Hey, it's my list. I can do what I want, and what I want is both of these games in me list. Persona 5 Strikers is a brilliant follow up to the legendary Persona 5 and incorporated the Warriors formula into the Persona world beautifully. Age of Calamity is more of a pure Musou experience and keeps the Breath of the Wild aesthetic and vibe and makes for an awesome prequel.、Uh, kind of. I like the Musou games, and when Omega Force puts their mind to something, they can make gold like Age of Calamity and Persona 5 Strikers. Even if you haven't played Breath of the Wild or Persona 5, I still say give both games a spin, and they will keep you entertained for a very, very, very long time. Some say having two games share a spot on your top 10 list is cheating. It's my list, but I can do what I want. And what I want is to talk about the game at our number 8 spot. Unbeknownst to most, but now known to all, is that I am quite fond of rhythm games, stemming from my love of Owen Don and Guitar Hero. Easy to learn, difficult to master, and always good to pass a few moments on. I don't think Voice was the first rhythm game on the Switch, but it was certainly one of the earliest and one of the ones I put the most time into. Whether you're playing in handheld mode or playing on the TV, it never got old, and there was plenty of awesome songs here to keep you entertained. And they added in more songs as free DLC. So if you're looking for a rhythm game on the Switch, this is definitely one to check out. Rhythm games, they're pretty fun, but I want to get into some blast processing, and that's the perfect game at our number seven spots. As someone who grew up with the Sega Genesis, 
It was nice seeing Sonic back in form after some uh, questionable releases. Sonic Mania plays, sounds, and looks great, and it has some of the best level designs in the Sonic series. It was also nice seeing Ray and Mighty back in action after being out of the spotlight for so long. Playing Sonic Mania launched me right back into my youth where nothing else mattered besides me, the Genesis, and the Sonic games. Not much else to say here besides please remake Sonic Adventure Sega. Blast processing is cool and all, but sometimes you want to blow up stuff with a mech. So that's the perfect game at our number 6 spots. The quickest way to a man's heart is not through his stomach, nor through his pee pee, but through blowing up stuff with mechs. I love me some mechas, and I was hyped to play Damon X Machina. This game really went under the radar, and it's a shame because it is really damn good. I blame Scott the Waz for constantly making fun of this game in his videos. He doesn't even believe in video games. The art style is really unique, and gives it a very unique vibe compared to other mecha games I've played. And there's a lot of customization here and action to keep any mech fan or man-child happy for days on end. Remember kids, if you need to blow up some steam, just blow up some mechs. As much fun as it is to blow stuff up with mechs, sometimes you like turn-based RPG combat, which is the perfect game at our number 5 spot. One of my favorite genres is the classic turn-based RPG. There's just something relaxing about running around, grinding, and taking out more powerful opponents in the game world. It's like therapy to me. Octopath Traveler does that classic style of gameplay with flying colors, and has a beautiful art style to complement it. It's a textbook case of art direction over pure graphical prowess. This title will always look amazing. But graphics a good game don't make, and Octopath's gameplay definitely backs it up. Turn-based RPG combat is fun and all, but sometimes you just want to dodge a lot of bullets, which is the perfect game at our number 4 spot. I'm a simple man. I see spaceships blowing up stuff, and I see a game I want to buy. There's a lot of spaceship shooters out there on the Switch, such as Ikaruga and Thunder Force, and more modern titles like Shikodo and Don Maku Unlimited 3. While you can't go wrong with any of those titles, I'm going to pick Crimson Clover as the best, as it has the most amount of options. You have practice modes for different types of spaceships, many difficulty settings, replay mode. Crimson Clover goes above and beyond to help ease players into the insanity of bullet hell. The level design is very top-notch, and I would expect nothing less from a game that's been in development since, well, 2011. Nothing here feels unfair, you just gotta have that steady hand and maneuver through the madness. Crimson Clover will destroy your hands and your eyes, and potentially your house. But if you're gonna get destroyed, you might as well have a fun time. Here we are, the top three, the top three best games on the Nintendo Switch. What can they be? Well, let's just get right into it with the game at our number three spot. Planum is a name you can trust. Just about any Planum game will be over-the-top action stupidity, and it will be awesome! Ignoring some pacing and camera issues, Astral Chain was quite a rush. With the five legions under your control, there's a lot of Eldritch abominations that need destroying, and man is it fun to style on them and kill their asses. And this game puts up one hell of a fight. Even playing for this footage, I got my ass handed to me on a silver plate. But it was so stylish and so addicting, I kept coming back for more. I definitely want to get back into this game, I really hope Nintendo and Platinum do a sequel to this title. We've had some really heavy hitting games on our top 10 list so far, but we're still not done. So let's get into the second best Switch game with the game at our number 2 spot. The Switch has become something of a haven for indie titles. There is a lot of great indies on the Switch, but I'm going to pick Dead Cells as the best. It's 2D, fast-paced, side-scrolling goodness with the addictive gameplay of an arcade title. When you sink hours into a game trying to get that one perfect run, you know you have a great game on your hands. I spent hours grinding this tile just to clear it, then those developers had to go in and add a DLC that gave me even more bang for my buck. It's intense, it's addictive, it has a nice sense of humor, and it's awesome. Pro tip, turrets are really, really, really goddamn powerful. There's been a lot of great games on this list so far. Did I talk about yours on this list? Did I miss it? Let me know down there in the comments. Make sure you subscribe while you're down there, and let's talk about the game at our number one spot, 
the best Nintendo Switch game is... As I mentioned earlier, there's something about the classic turn-based RPG formula that is therapeutic to me, and no game has done the turn-based style better than Dragon Quest XI-S. Well, after 11 of these damn games, they better have the formula down. Everything about Dragon Quest XI-S was tuned to perfection. You get a party full of fun characters, you get a game world that is super big with a lot of stuff to do, a 2D mode if you want to play the game like the old school titles, and there's a lot of options to customize the experience to your liking. And for a game that's over 100 hours long, it never got old or repetitive thanks to good mission designs and good enemy variety. What put Dragon Quest XI S in top tier for me, even more so than other titles on the Switch, is character. The world of Dragon Quest is very much alive and really sticks with you after playing. And what helps that out is strong art direction, very vibrant colors, and really clever writing from the localization team. It reminds me of one of my favorite games of all time, Skies of Arcadia. They're both very comparable. Neither game reinvents the RPG wheel, nor is the plot in either game anything unique. But between their personality, the aesthetic, the vibes, both games are greater than the sum of their parts. And that's why Dragon Quest XI S is the best game on the Switch to me. It doesn't do anything new, it just does everything perfectly. So there it is, there's my list of the top 10 best Nintendo Switch titles. And you've noticed that there's a few missing titles on this list. Those games being Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I do think those games are fantastic and games that you should have been playing, but I wanted to give some highlights to titles that you may have missed or maybe forgotten about. And plus, who wants to be the million Switch reviewer or top 10 list maker and be like, hey, Breath of the Wild is the best Switch game, guys. I wanted to be something different and something unique and shine some light on games that really appeal to me and maybe appeal to you. And like I said, there's a lot of Nintendo Switch games out there, so let me know what your favorites down there are in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. Maybe follow me on the social media too, Twitter, Instagram, at ZMangs. It is really sunny in Tokyo right now, so I'm going to enjoy the sunlight, and I will see you on the next video. Take it easy, everybody. Later.